Welcome to week two of Calvary Missionary Warrior Series. Last week, we played it nice and gave you easy challenges, but this week, we are taking it up a notch. So are you ready? Can you help us unlock the different segments? If you think you're up for the challenge, we really hope you are. And as a way to help us make sure we are all ready, let's stand up, dance, and get ready for our lesson. It is time for worship. Went boldly to Saul. 
And when he spoke to Saul in the name of Jesus, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, so he could see again. He was then baptized and received the Holy Spirit. God truly changed his life. And now we are going to begin our Bible lesson today as he began his new mission with boldness. Before we can learn more about that, though, we must complete our challenge. This time, this is a hard one. We have to pat our head and rub our bellies at the same time. Okay, we have to pat your head with the rubber belly to do it at the same time. Okay, let's try it. No, no, maybe if I try this one. There, there we go. See, I can only do it one way. What about you? Can you do it both? Pat, rub, pat, rub. Your brain doesn't like this, and your brain does it. This way is harder. Oh, okay, okay, we did it. You did it, you patted, rub, unlocked it. Bible lesson coming up. Listen closely to this Bible story. We are picking up in the story after Saul has become Paul. Remember before the bright light was shown on Paul's eyes, he was on his way to Damascus. After he became a Christian, Paul traveled the rest of the way to Damascus and shocked the people by preaching about Jesus. Paul had been the chief enemy of the believers, yet here he was telling everyone about the good news of Christ. Wow! But the temple leaders and the Jews noticed as well, and they were not happy about it. In fact, there was a conspiracy among them to kill him. Paul wasn't even able to escape the city because the Jews were sneaky enough to block his exit by guarding the gates. So to be even sneakier, Paul had his friends helped out. They put him in a basket. Hopefully this was a big basket and probably a fishing tool of some sort, but they used it to get him out of the city safe and sound. Can you imagine the trust it must have taken for Paul to trust his friends to do this crazy task? A whole lot of, a whole lot because his life work was dependent on them. But he did it. Paul escaped the city of Jerusalem. That was a twist I bet you were not thinking was going to happen. All right, so before we can move on to our object lesson today, we have a mission for you. This is Calvary Missionary Warrior, isn't it? So this is your task. It's a tricky one, and I'm not sure I'm quite clear on it either. It's five twist jumps. I'm, I don't, you know, a twist is this, right? Twist, and a jump is this. So I'm, but this is a spin. So is it a twist, jump like that? Or do we just jump, twist, jump, twist? We're gonna go, let's do that. Jump, twist like that. All right, ready? Okay, five twist jumps. Here we go. Whew. Go opposite ways. And keep things, well, it won't keep things even because it's five, not six. Let's try. All right, ready? One twist jump. Two twist jump, three twist jump, four twist jump, five twist jump. That was weird and not so easy, but we did it. And we unlocked the next segment. So let's go see it. Great job twisting your way here. And Miss Kayla's right. There was a twist in that story a lot of us didn't see coming. Escaping a city in a basket, it just sounds crazy. But we need to backtrack a little to remember what God got us to this part. God gave Saul boldness. His life was transformed by Jesus and he immediately began preaching in the synagogues in the city of Damascus. But the people there were shocked at what they were hearing. They were thinking the same thing we were thinking. Wasn't this the same man who had been trying to round up the Christians and have them arrested? What they didn't have yet was that the life change that had happened in his life through Jesus. I am thankful that we get to have the Bible that tells us this story and many others. The Bible is filled with lots of great stories and good advice from page one all the way to the end, but it also is a tool for us to use. Let's say you're reading the Bible one day and you run across something that is particularly amazing and you want it to be able to remember and go back where it is and find it again, right? So what do you do? That's right, you can mark the page, you can put a book bookmark in, but that might get hard after marking that if there's a lot of them, but you could also highlight the passage. With a highlighter, you can highlight the verse that means a lot to you. You can put the, that's, that puts a verse in bold, so that way you can open up your Bible and you can find it and it stands out. It gets noticed. Missionaries are like this highlighter. 
With God's help, they are bold. They stand out from the crowd. They share the love of Jesus to people all over the world who need to hear it. When we look at them, we see the word of God in action. Speaking of action, we have to get into, into action to get to our memory verse. We're going to run in place for 10 seconds. Stand up. Get ready. You guys ready? Help us get to our memory verse. Here we go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You did it. We're now ready for your memory verse. All right, boys and girls. Great job making it to the memory verse challenge for the week. And this week. It is a two-parter. We've got two challenges in one. Are you ready to help me get the memory verse in order and then move on to the next part? I certainly hope so. So the first thing we have to do is put it in order. And then we have to say it as loud as we can. Are you ready for the challenge? All right, so our memory verse is found in 1 John 5, 14. And it says, and we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. All right. Do you think you can help me get this in order? All right. So 1 John 5, 14. Well, this one has a capital letter, so I know that one starts first. And we are confident, right? That's how it goes? Okay. So here's the we are confident. Okay, what comes next? Do you remember? That he hears us. Okay, all right, let's see. That he hears, hears, that he hears us. You know what, boys and girls? This is an extra hard challenge. You know why? There's a word missing. All right, I'm gonna write it in. Remy, ready? First John 5, 14. And we are confident that he hears us. Huh. Pastor Lindsay, she was trying to trick us this week. But we're smarter than that, right? We got it. That he hears us. Whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Okay. Whenever, whenever, here we go, this big long word, that's what, whenever we ask for uh -oh, anything that pleases him. All right, is that right? I think so. 1 John 5, 14. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Whew, we got it. They tried to trick us and everything, but we figured it out. You boys and girls are so smart. The second part of this verse, or this challenge, is we have to say it as loud as we possibly can. Are you ready? I want to hear you all the way through the screen. Ready? 1 John 5, 14. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. All right, that was pretty good, but I think you can be a little louder. Ready? One more time. We're going to say it all together, and I want you to be extra loud. Ready? 1 John 5, 14. And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. Huh, that was so much better. You boys and girls did it. Let's wrap it up for the day. We're only on week two and learning so much about Paul already. And today we saw as Paul began to tell others about Jesus or after he became a Christian. God gives us the power to speak boldly about Jesus too, whether here or halfway around the world. Today, our spotlight country is the country of Bolivia. Bolivia is a country in South America with about 10 million people. See it all the way down here? It's really geographically diverse. In the west, you have the cold terrain of the Andes Mountains. But north of that, you have the steaming jungles of the Amazon Basin. It's crazy, right? The official language of Bolivia 
is Spanish, but there are many different people groups in Bolivia, each with their own language and own religious beliefs. The majority of the country claims to be Christian, but the people still celebrate pagan festivals throughout the entire year. The understanding of who Jesus really is and how salvation is available only through him has become more confused for many people. But God is sending missionaries to Bolivia, men and women who will speak boldly about Jesus. People who will share the love of Jesus with Indian tribes and other people groups in their own language. Missionaries who aren't afraid to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. And with God's help, it's possible to speak boldly, whether we do it in Bolivia or in our own school or neighborhood. We will learn more about that next week with you all. But we were so excited that you joined us all today. Can't wait to see you all and have a great week.